Let us try an example on the moment distributions method. There is a three span continuous member. The member has a span of 6 meter, 4 meter, and 6 meter. And it has a constant cross sections. And there will be an uniform distributed permanent actions of GK equals to 25 kN per meter and QK equals to 10 kN per meter. The question asks us to determine the shear force and bending moment acting on the continuous member by using the moment distributions method. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, you know that you need to test the member in accordance to different types of load arrangement and then to produce the envelope shear force and bending moment diagram in order for you to determine the maximum and shear force and bending moment. There are two load sets that you can choose. In this case, we choose to use the first load set to, for us to do the analysis. As the continuous member has only three span, that means we will require four load arrangement. This includes the alternate maximum and minimum starting at the maximum and minimum for the loop case 1 respectively and then putting the two continuous span with the maximum and the maximum load move. This gives us four arrangement of the loading. For the ultimate limit state, the maximum load is defined by 1.35 GK and 1.5 QK as for the minimum load is defined by 1.35 GK only. Out of these four arrangements of the load, the star here indicates the positions where the maximum moment which can be in the form of sagging or hogging that may occur. At the current stage, we do not know yet which will give us the most critical situations under the conditions of different stretch of the continuous member. This will only be known after we have merged all the shear force and bending moment diagram into the envelope shear force and bending moment diagrams. Substituting the GK and QK into the equations and in accordance to the length of the member, the total vertical load as represented for the maximum and minimum conditions for the span 6 meters and 4 meters are outlined here. Next, we start to construct the moment distributions analysis by using a table. The joints are A, B, C, D, which is just at the positions of the support. We analyze for the first load case first which is represented by the maximum, minimum and maximum load. The span length is given here. The stiffness is theoretically calculated by using these equations, which is equals to 4 EI per L for the middle span and equals to 3 EI per L for the end span. However, we know that the continuous member has the same type of material and the cross-sectional area it will be the same. With that, the EI will be constant. 
This will later be cancelled off when we need to calculate for the distribution factors. To simplify the calculations process, the stiffness equation is divided by 4EI so that to reduce the amount of the number to be substituted. This gives us a new stiffness ratio here. If you find yourself to have difficulty to understand this, you can always stick to the original equations. They should give you the similar outcome in terms of the final moment here. To be more precise, they should give you the same outcome in terms of the distribution factors and starting from the distribution factors, everything will remain the same. This is due to the fact that the stiffness is actually meant for you to calculate for the distribution factors. For the end support, the distribution factors will be equal to zero. For sections B, A, the distribution factors is determined by the stiffness here divided by the summations of the stiffness of the two members. As for the stiffness of the other side, it will be equal to the stiffness of this member divided by the summations of the stiffness of these two members. Same goes to the other joint C. As the stiffness of the member here is slightly higher, that gives you a higher degree of distribution factor here. In another word, this segment will carry about one third of the moment, while this segment will carry about two thirds of the moment. Next, you need to determine the fixed end moment. For the end span, the end support is pinned and the intermediate support is fixed. It is subjected to an uniformly distributed load. Therefore, this equation is being used as it is represented by these conditions. As for the intermediate span, both ends are fixed and it is supported with the uniformly distributed load, which is represented by these conditions. The fixed end moment is given by this equation. Substitute the relevant equations, you obtain the fixed end moment as per stated here. The sign positive and negative is representing the directions of the moment. It is considered as positive when the moment is counterclockwise and negative when it is in the clockwise directions. You will see here the fixed end moment here are not balanced at the join at the current stage. There is a differences between the two fixed end moment. These differences will be the theta fixed end moment. The differences in terms of fixed end moment will need to be carried by the member on each side of the joint. This is where the distribution factors come in. This member is stiffer, therefore you have a higher degree of distribution factors and it takes a larger portion of the extra fixed end moment due to these two. And this side will take a smaller portion. The portion is determined by the distribution factors. In another word, this side will take one third of the theta FEM and this side will take two thirds of the theta FEM. The summations of these two numbers should theoretically be equal to the negative FEM. 
the negative sign to be added in the equation here is actually representing that the member is resisting the additional fixed end moment due to the balance of the two. Next, the fixed end moment here is to be carried over to the opposite joint. As the end support here are unable to carry any moment, there is no point for you to carry over the moment. You may choose to carry over the moment to the, this support, but eventually it will transfer back to here. As it doesn't carry any moment. After you have carried over the moment, the moment to reach the other side will reduce by half. That means this value multiplied by 0 0.5, it will be equals to this value. Same process is done at the opposite directions. After the loop has been carried over, this loop in comparison to the loop from the other side, which you have no loop to be carried over from here, the differences in terms of moment it will be equals to 58.1. This again has to be multiplied with the distribution factors, where one third of the loop will be taken here, another two third will be here. Then you proceed to carry over the moment again. Half of the moment will reach here. And then you redistribute the moment. The calculation step will repeat until it stops at the balance step. You may stop when the numbers for the moment here, the balance, is relatively small than the original fixed end moment. Typically, when the number here is less than 1 out of 100 of the original fixed end moment, it should be good enough. You may choose to carry over the moment again until you reach to a higher degree of decimal place. However, the final moment here will not be very significantly different than what we obtain here. The reason is, this number will become less and less, and the summations of this small number, it will just lead to a small degree of changes. The final moments after the moment distributions is obtained by summing the entire column from the fixed end moment. This is obtained by summing the entire column here, and this is obtained by summing the entire column here, and sense goes to this and this and this. This moment distribution methods normally will end up to be two of the identical numbers at a single joint. If you found these two numbers vary quite significantly, that means probably there are some errors of your calculations during your design calculations. The value obtained here it represents the final moment at each side of the joint here. This can be represented in this manner. This is for segment AB, segment BC, and segment CD. For further analysis, you can actually separate the segment with that, you can use it to find the reactions and from the reactions, you will be able to determine the shear force diagram and from the shear force diagram, you will be able to obtain the moment. 
the moment at the support is the one that you obtain from the moment distribution table. Same set of calculation step is conducted on the second and third segment of the beam. This will give you the shear force diagram here and the bending moment diagram here. With all these calculation steps, you have only obtained the bending moment and shear force diagram for the first loop arrangement. For the second set, third set and the fourth set of loop arrangement, you will need to repeat the calculation steps here and determine the reactions and shear force diagram and bending moment diagram here. This should give you another three set of the shear force diagram and another three set of bending moment diagram. Next, you need to merge all this bending moment and shear force diagram together for you to obtain the envelope bending moment and shear force diagram. Different loop set will give you different degree of the moment and shear. And throughout the member, you choose the most critical value to be highlighted in the envelope shear force and bending moment diagram. 